All right, folks, welcome back to the Be The Bright podcast presented by Ridge Supply. My name is Matt Hawkins. This is Jordan Spoon. And our special guest today is Ian Boswell. We're back for the third episode with Ian. Uh, we've gone over some, some history of who is Boz, and we've, uh, we've covered some world tour um, life. And um, Ian, you know, when we have actually met in person, I met, I met you at your house. And um, you just, you and, and your fiance at the time, uh, who's now your wife, uh, Gretchen had, had just recently purchased um, an old uh, farmstead in, in Vermont. And um, I got to say, I was stoked to go up there and ride. <laughs> it is so far away from where I live. Yes. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was a two and a half day drive to get there. Um, which is no joke and which is crazy, but it was also so much fun once we got there. It is you live in what they call the the Northeast Kingdom, right? Yep. Like describe to people what it's like because I, I would I would not do it justice if I described it, but um just describe to people what Ooh. what the Northeast Kingdom is like. Yeah, well, I mean I would say, you know, Vermont as a whole is a pretty unique state in my perspective. Um just having traveled around a fair bit of the U.S., but the Northeast Kingdom is kind of like this Northeast pocket of, of the state of Vermont, including Caledonia County, Essex County, and Orleans County. Um, it's probably also the, um, I don't want to say poorest, least wealthy three counties in the, in the state as well, because we're up in this Northeast corner, you know, Canada's to the North, you know, Northern New Hampshire's to the East. Um, there's not a whole lot up here, and I feel I would describe it as like going back in time, you know, there's not, it's, it's beautiful because it's so, you know, in a way untouched, you know, it's, there's tons of people still dairy farming, you know, families, you know, it's a very much a community and place where, you know, it's just generation after generation. And, you know, they're welcoming to, to new people like myself and, and Gretchen moving here. Um, but it's, it's a small, small place. And there's a lot of, you know, family history and, you know, just, people don't, it's a place that people don't really want to leave. Yeah. Um, you know, new people come in, but it's like, you know, there's not much new construction going on. So it's, you know, I mean, for me, it's honestly like the most beautiful place in the world. And yeah, yeah, I love it. The writing is fantastic. The people are incredibly friendly and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a harsh place to live and it makes people tough. You know, winters are long. You're, you know, most people live down a dirt road, you know, you probably want a tractor and, you know, like I said, going back in time, we're lucky yeah. to be doing this call today because Wi-Fi is a big, a big issue up yeah. here. So uh, not a lot of young people moving in. Yeah. When we, when, when we rolled in there, um, you know, e even your phone, it just doesn't, it doesn't always work. And um, you're kind of isolated. And there was um, in downtown Peachum, uh, there's a little cafe, the Peachum Cafe. Shout out to the Peachum Cafe. Yep. Uh, they they have Wi-Fi, and you can actually sit outside in your car right at, right by the door and get it, which is nice. Um, so that's what we had to do to kind of find out where everything was. But you know, the thing that the thing that struck me before the ride and doing doing the Fall Fondo that you that you guys put on was um, how much of yourself at you and Gretchen put you put into the event. Um, and that was the thing that really, I mean, the, the town was huge. They, they, they showed out, they helped, but everything about it would had a per, it was like, I went to your wedding. That's what I felt like I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of really, that's kind of what, um, that's, that's the amount of personal touch that was in the event. Um, and so shout out to y'all for just like, I mean, cause you didn't have to do that. You could have mailed it in and just had a route sheet and, you know, um, but it was definitely, yeah. you could tell that you all had put a lot of time and energy into it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I mean, kind of connecting it back to where we live. It, it's very much like the way of doing things here. Like, you, you know, you put something and we did it because we wanted to do it. And we wanted to, you know, give back to our community. And like you said, you know, we wouldn't be able to organize, you know, the Peach and Paul Fonda without the support of the community, just because we depend on so much, you know, whether it's volunteers or just community space, you know, parking and people, you know, mowing the field. So we have space to, you know, park everyone. Yeah. Um, but, and I guess, you know, when we decided to create this, this event, it was like, we wanted to, I wanted to create something that I wanted to go to, you know, it was like, it's relatively small, it's fun, it's intimate, you know, it's 
very manageable for us. You know, we didn't want to, we talked about like outsourcing it and having someone else, having someone else run it, but we just wanted to keep it, you know, our event and like, you know, you've come to our house twice now for the, yeah. for the home ride the night before the, the main event. And um, yeah, thank you for getting those bonfires started. Spent a lot of time. Oh, I forgot there. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess that's Ooh. one of the cool things about living here is like, you know, very seldom do we go visit people just because people are always wanting to come visit us. And I feel like that's a yeah. good sign of your living in a cool place is when people yeah. actually want to come, come visit you. Um, and our house and just, you know, the barn and the, the setting is, you know, very conducive to hosting and both Gretchen and I love hosting events and having people yeah. over and cooking and um, yeah, it just, it's something's really like, you know, it's a lot of work, you know, there's always, there's always yeah. something to be done. Our house was built in 1785 and I'm, you know, the more wow. time I spend here during COVID, I'm like, oh man, there's so many things that are, oh, yeah. you know, going wrong or need to be fixed. But, um, you know, the house has been here for over 200 years, so I don't think it's going to fall down while we're talking right now, but yeah. Well, um, you, you, you know, the place is incredible and, and it's got so much, um, it's not just history, but like, you know, it's lived in, it's totally lived in and, and it's amazing what you all are doing to the barn, um, has been, has been awesome. Um, their barn is so big. I don't know how, I mean, is it like 150 foot long? Is it longer than that? Yeah, I, I think mean, it's, it's one, 150 by 50 by three <laughs> wow. stories. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> it's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And, and then, um, you know, the, the setting is really unique. I think that's the other thing that's kind of, as a cyclist, I love that you're like on, you're kind of on like a four-way, on like a four-way corner, kind of weird. It's a very strange thing, but like, as for, for me, like that struck me. I was like, Ooh, like my routes, you know, I'd ride out of my, my driveway. If I'm in, like I can go anywhere, you know, yeah. unfortunately you got to go up uh, yeah. in all four directions. <laughs> yeah. But um, the riding is incredible, incredible. The, the, if you're into gravel, um, it, it, I mean, is there anything better? Like, cause it's, it's insane. Like you can ride, you could string together unlimited gravel only rides pretty much, right? Oh yeah. I mean, 70% of the roads in the state are unpaved and probably more so in our, in our That's area. You know, the roads that are paved are, you know, the main roads, you know, route two to the north, you know, route five to the east. And those are like roads that, you know, you probably don't, I wouldn't spend a ton of time on. Yeah. Um, oh, and you said, you know, they are gravel roads, but I wouldn't necessarily say they're gravel. I mean, they're like smooth, hard packed sand. Yes. And yes. it's like, it's not even like, you know, you could ride a 23 millimeter road tire on a lot of them, which, you know, some people have. And, you know, depending on the road, you know, you, yeah. you most often times fine, but it's cool to then, you know, take those roads as kind of like the main roads, and then connect to some of these, you know, class four roads, you know, rake factory, something that's a bit rougher. Um, oh, rake factory. But there's just, yeah, there's just <laughs> endless, <laughs> there's endless riding. And it's, it's incredible that, you know, even three and a half years of living here, I'm still, you know, I've kind of like gone through this phase of like, oh, I did the pavement. I did some of the, you know, kind of more main gravel roads. Yeah. Started doing some of the class four roads. And now I'm like on to like exploring old logging roads so i'm like wow like there's still like there's every year i keep like discovering yep. these there's new... snowmobiling there's snowmobiling trails too right that yep. totally rideable uh, in the yeah. in the summer um it's incredible if you if you get the chance if you're listening if you get the chance to do peach and fall fondo in the future it is worth the trip every time that we've that we've been there twice and when we've been riding back we've said we're not going back the drive is too far and then <laughs> and then as soon as we get back we're like we're going back next year it's so much yeah. fun it's worth it um and it's not that if you're in new england the drive's not that far at all but uh if if you're like me um we drove up there and we had an absolute blast we rode the day before we rode too hard the day before then we did the <laughs> Rome, we, then we did the rome ride and bonked and then then did the the actual ride the next day and i was completely blown because the other deceptive thing is that the hills are i wouldn't say they're long but man are they punchy like and yeah. they never stop and so it isn't it's not an enjoyable meander uh it is it is it's a really hard place yeah. to ride in a good way yeah yeah no it's it's definitely it's definitely an exercise. Um, you know, yeah. it tends to be like at, at minimum, you're going to have a thousand feet of elevation gain for every 10 miles. We actually have an A-frame out back and there's some folks staying there from Michigan right now. Um, a younger couple and the, 
the, the guy just did the peach and fall fondo course yesterday. He's like, man, I did more climbing on that loop than I would do in a month. Yeah. In oh, oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it's not long, but it's just, it's constant. It's just, you know, you're either going it, up or you're going down. It's on it, my radar to get up there with Matt at some point. I know we've talked about it and hopefully he's next talked year. me into yeah. it. Yeah. So. I mean, it, it is um, Vermont and it seems to be Vermont is attracting the people, you know, Ted's living there now. It sounds like uh, John and Pamela are coming out that way. I mean, you know, it's 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 the it's the place to be, and part of the reason it is, it really is a great place to live. Um, and I, I I'm jealous because the riding is insane. I'm not really into the fat biking uh, that you got to do in the winter, but um, I I see yeah. I see how bundled up you are, and and I'm like. <laughs> My trainer seems really nice right now. My yeah. Tra- yeah. Yeah. For, for six months of the year, it's fantastic riding, but the other six months it's, yeah, you have to really want to go out and ride cause it's, you're bundling up, but I mean, which is, I mean, again, kind of one of the beauties of Vermont, if it was, you know, summertime all year, it would be too busy. I think the, the best thing that Vermont has is winter cause it keeps a lot of people <laughs> away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you, um, are you guys, do you have plans for silo side? It is, is that, is, is that been put on hold or is that still something that you're. Yeah. So we have a, you know, we have, um, we have an A-frame out back that we rent out on hip camp. My brother and I built a log lean to um, this spring during COVID. Um, so that's up for rent for people who want to camp. And then in, we do have a, a kind of a bed and breakfast in our house that's been closed since, since March. But um, we do, like I said, we love hosting, entertaining people, you know, we like cooking and, you know, letting people have a good time and relaxing. And I think it's, you know, more so as the world gets just kind of crazier and people are like, so, you know, busy with work. It's nice to like allow people to come up. We've had so many guests, you know, stay at the bed and breakfast and just like, Oh wow. Like, you know, it's great that we don't have service. You know, we actually sat around and, you know, played card games, did a puzzle. It's like, you know, like I said, it's, it's a step back in time. And, you know, sometimes we're very disconnected from the world and, in many ways, that's kind of a, a blessing in disguise that, you know, sometimes it's like, Hey, you know what? I actually can't download Netflix right now. So I'm going <laughs> to let's play some cribbage because you know, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. But, well, I, yeah. we're looking forward to, um, 2021, you know, peach and fall fondo, hopefully, hopefully things, um, can happen. I know it's the same way with the buck 50 for us, you know, like I'm hopeful. I don't, uh, who knows? We'll see, but yeah. uh, I'm hoping we can get back to um, uh, experiencing that stuff and not feeling guilty or awkward if we're doing it too, you know. So yeah, um, I'm sure I'm sure you guys will figure it out. Peachum was uh, the the people in Peachum were also really special too. You could tell that the volunteers and everybody that was there, they really appreciated the fact that the event was happening and it wasn't like a burden, you know. And yeah. that was kind of a neat a neat way to kind of just experience the middle of nowhere in Vermont, you know, in a way. So, well, yeah, my, the volunteers are so surprised that people actually want to come here. They're like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> people actually like, it. it's like, we live in a beautiful place. Of course people want to come, but I think you, you know, it's easy to take something for granted when you're there your whole life. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, Ian, thank you for, for giving us a, a little, a tour through the, Vermont, uh, Northeast kingdom countryside. <laughs> and, um, this, this will conclude our episode 39, 39. Are we going to get to 38? 38, 38. Okay. Okay. 38, yeah, 38, 38. Don't get too ahead of yourself. I know. <laughs> I thought we were getting close to 40. Um, <laughs> uh, with, with Ian Boswell, we're going to be back for uh, a little bit more and we appreciate you checking us out here on the be the bright podcast.